Good morning, ladies. The Alpha Womanpreneur here, AKA the Alpha Woman One, also known as Arvet, coming to you live this beautiful Wednesday morning. I hope that all of you are doing well. Drop down in the comments and let me know. And for those of you that don't know me, I help millennial womanpreneurs of color brand market and find the creatures within themselves. And today I'm coming to you with my first episode of womanpreneurs, innovatresses and creatresses. And this is a series that we will be discussing black women in entrepreneurship, innovation, and creativity. And we're going to highlight their contributions and achievements in those areas. So I'm going to share my screen with you all. And today we will be talking about Anna Imagine, the inventor of the pastry fork, Sarah Boone, the inventor of the improved version of the ironing board, Mary Beatrice Davises, the inventor of the sanitary belt, the improved version of the bathroom holder, and the back washer mount, and Dr. Jane C. Wright, the inventor of cancer treatment, which is chemotherapy. Okay, so first we are going to talk about Miss Anna M. Manging, and I'm going to read her biography. We're going to visit this website, Black Then. Okay, for all those who love baking but want the task to be made easy as possible, you have Anna M. Manning to thank for her ability to foresee your needs. The young African-American woman invented the pastry fort in 1891. The utensil was used to mix dough for pie crust, cookies, butter, and flour pastries without needing to physically manipulate the ingredients with one's hands. However, the fork was also used to beat eggs, mashed potatoes, and prepare salad dressings. Anna M. Manchin was awarded a patent on March 1st, 1892 for the pastry fork for mixing pastry dough. Okay. So next up is Sarah Boone. Okay. And here's a picture of Miss Sarah Boone. And I'm going to visit this website to read a bit about her invention of the improved ironing board. Women's History Month, meet Sarah Boone, inventor of an improved ironing board. Okay. Dressmaker Sarah Boone made her name by inventing an improvement to the ironing board in 1892 that would make it easier to press sleeves without introducing unwanted creases. In her patent application, she wrote, as quoted by biography.com, that the person purpose of her invention was to produce a cheap, simple, convenient, and highly effective device, particularly adapted to being used in ironing the sleeves and bodies of ladies' garments. So here is a drawing of her ironing board. Okay. Boone's board was very narrow and curved, and this was the right size and fit of a sleeve common in ladies' clothes during the, that period. 
It was reversible and hence made it easier to iron both sides of a sleeve. The African-American woman noted at the time that her board could also be produced flat rather than curved, which is ideal for the cut of sleeves of men's coats. Before Boone's ironing board, ironing was done with irons heated on the stove of fire. Use a table that was covered with a thick cloth. Others simply made use of the kitchen table or prop a board on two chairs. Born in 1832 in Craven County, North Carolina, Sarah Boone married a brick mason, James Boone, when she was 15. They had eight children. She lived in New Haven for the rest of her life before passing away in 1904. Boone received a patent for her invention in 1892. Her ironing board has since made it easy for people to press sleeves. Okay. So there is a picture again of Miss Sarah Boone and her ironing board. Okay. Next up is Mrs. Mary Beatrice Davidson Kenner. And here is a picture of her and her inventions. This is the sanitary belt and the bathroom tissue holder. Okay, so I am gonna visit Black Ben and read her bio. Okay, Mary Beatrice Davidson Kenner, born May the 17th, 1912, died January the 13th, 2006, so the African-American inventor most noted for the development of the sanitary belt. She was born in Monroe, North Carolina, and credited her father, Sidney Nathaniel Davidson, with giving her a thirst for discovering things. Her sister, Mildred Davidson, was Austin Smith was also an inventor. Kenner invented both a sanitary belt in 1956 and a bathroom tissue holder in 1982, among other hygiene inventions. She invented the sanitary belt and the sanitary belt with moisture proof napkin pocket. The sanitary belt gave women a better alternative for handling their periods. It was patented. 30 years after she invented it because the company who was initially inter interested in her creation rejected it when they learned that Kenner was African-American. Back in Kenner's day, tampons were available to women, but they were discouraged from using them because it was considered indecent. Another alternative was to use cloth or rag but this method was often unsanitary and inconvenient. Women and girls who opted for cloth usually needed to stay indoors during their time of the month. Sanitary belts were not only more practical, they were more liberating. It wasn't until the 1960s that maxi pads became more readily available. As for the bathroom tissue holder, Kenner's design was improved version of the common holder that allowed the loose end of the bathroom tissue roll to be accessible at all times. Kenner's pro prolific creations also include a mountable back washer and a carrier attachment for an invalid walker. She worked as a professional floral arranger and had her own business in the field of Washington, D.C. area. She never intended to make money off her inventions. She just wanted to make people's lives easier. Okay, and now I will be going to Dr. Jane C. Wright, and she is the inventor of the cancer treatment chemotherapy, and this is a picture from Pinterest. It doesn't have her bio there, so... I would go here. Here's another picture of her. Here's a picture of her. Another picture of her here. Okay, so I'll visit blackpass.org. And 
Dr. Jane Cookwright was a physician and cancer researcher who dedicated her professional career to the advancement of chemotherapy techniques. Jane Cookwright was born in New York City, New York on November 20th, 1919. She was the older of two daughters to parents Louis Tompkins Wright and Corinne Cookwright. Wright attended private schools in New York City and in 1942 graduated from Smith College in North Ampton, Massachusetts with a Bachelor of Arts degree. Wright's father was one of the first African-American graduates at Harvard Medical School, established the Cancer Research Center at Harlem Hospital, New York in 1947. After her undergraduate studies, Wright attended New York Medical College on a four-year scholarship. She graduated with an MD in 1945. Jane Cook Wright was an intern at Bellevue Hospital, New York, between 1945 and 1946. In 1947, she married David D. Jones, Jr., an attorney. The couple had two daughters, Jane and Allison. In 1949, Wright worked as a school physician in the New York City public schools and was a visiting physician at Harlem Hospital. In 1952, after the death of her father, Wright took over as the director of his Cancer Research Foundation. In 1955, Wright began her work at the New York University Medical Center at the, as the director of the Cancer Chemotherapy Research. She was also an instructor of research surgery in the Medical Center's Department of Surgery. In July 1967, Dr. Wright became a professor of surgery at New York Medical College. At the time, she was the highest ranking African-American woman in a United States medical institution. Jane Cook Wright has received numerous citations and awards. Among them, the Merit Award from Mademoiselle Magazine 1952, the Spirit of Achievement Award of the Women's Division of Albert Einstein College of Medicine in 1961, and the Hadassah Murdo Wreath Award in 1967. The following year, her alma mater, Smith College, presented her with the Smith Medal, its highest award. In 1971, Dr. Wright became the first woman to serve as president of the New York Cancer Society. In 1987, after a 44 year career, Dr. Jane Cook Wright retired as an emerita professor at New York Medical College. Her contributions to the research of cancer chemotherapy have helped to change the face of medicine and continue to be used to this day. Okay, so that is the four profiles of black women Creatresses, womanpreneurs, and innovatresses. And these Black women have contributed immense um, things to improve human life. And I am glad that they are being credited for it. And let's salute these amazing history making sisters. Okay, um, drop down in the comments your questions and comments about this video. Thanks for watching and you all have a great day.